The dream begins at an early age with the first tug on a glove. There's nothing more innocent than this game of pretending. Nothing more fundamentally pure than practice and discovery. The imagination of this young Georgia boy was vast and plentiful. His legacy unequaled. Bob Jones' artistic purity lives on this canvas known as Augusta National. Like Mr. Jones, most great champions surpassed their childhood dreams. The boy from the hills of Virginia, Sam Sneed. This determined look at age seven belonged to Ben Hogan. Little Latrobe, Pennsylvania developed a man, Arnold Palmer, whose charisma was felt worldwide. Even the eyes of a youthful Jack Nicholas suggested the bear's hunt began early. From the heartlands of America, Tom Watson. This boy from across the Atlantic, Nick Faldo. The triumphs are now a matter of record for all these men. Historic wins that were built by a boy on a range with a dream. Arnold Palmer is the master. Uh, up the hill. Today, more history will be made in Augusta, while somewhere there's a boy and a bag full of dreams. From the Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia, CBS Sports proudly presents the 1994 Masters Tournament. Welcome to the final round of the Masters for one golfer, a magical moment awaits on this course where beauty abounds. If there was ever a place on earth that defined the season, it's the Augusta National and springtime. 77, partly cloudy, it's been dry all week. It all started early Thursday morning. There was a chill in the air and plenty of nostalgia as three legends gathered once more, including 92-year-old Gene Sarazen, Nelson and Sneed in their early 80s. And it was up to the Squire. He got the tournament underway right down the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, this tournament has officially begun. We we'll hope you enjoy it. I'm sure there'll be a lot of excitement. Thank you. And now we're set for the final round. The pairings include Lauren Roberts with the surging South African, Ernie Ells, Watson and Floyd, former Ryder Cup captains, Baker Finch and McGovern. The next to last group, Larry Mize with Tom Kite and the 2.30 Eastern time pairing, Tom Lehman, who led coming in by one over Olaf Fabel. Earlier in this fourth round, Greg Norman at the second. This is for par. And he gives two away to the field, essentially, bogeying the par five second hole. Norman playing yesterday without a single birdie. Meanwhile, Tom Kite for par at number one. Ken Ventura, you believe the man who would putt the best today would win it. And check out Tom Kite for birdie at the second. Yeah. 
He has started off with two great putts. Jimmy's great save at one after hitting a fine shot and losing his left. But the man who puts the best will win. Larry Mize at the second. This is for birdie for Mize, the 87 winner. And a birdie for Mize gets him to six under. I'm surprised to see so many birdies at two where the pin is placed far left today. Well, Tom Lehman missed the green right with a second shot, Kenny. So he pitched it across third shot here on the par five. That was an excellent position. If you're going to lay up, lay up right when the pin is left. Lehman playing with Olaf Fabel. This for birdie for the 28 year old Spaniard. And with that birdie, Olaf Fabel joined Lehman at seven under. But Lehman still had his putt for birdie there at two. And he took the lead back alone at minus eight. We saw Kite start with a couple of nice putts. Here he is trying to make another save. At the fourth. Ooh. Curl then for him to stay at minus five. Thought about that for just a moment. And then at number five, again trying to save par. You just can't leave yourself those many putts, Jim. It's going to catch up with you. So, Kenny, that dropped Kite to minus four. Four out of the lead at that moment. Larry Mize, meanwhile, for par at the fifth. Mives gives one back also. He doesn't miss many of those. Tom Lehman knocked it over the green at five, just below our camera tower there, and watch his pitch from behind. Kenny, this is beautiful. Unless you've been there, Jim, you don't know how good that is. That's an excellent executed shot. Thirty five year old from Minnesota for par. What a save. Lehman one under on his round to that point. Now ahead Larry Mize tee shot at the sixth. Hundred and eighty yard par three. Got it on the upper plateau. Now the speedy putt for birdie. Very solid. And the purest of strokes. Now at seven, Larry Mize. This is a narrow tree line hole. And Mize with the approach here. Hole to place 360 yards, and you lay back to leave yourself a good wedge shot. Standing iron shot for Mize, and now for the birdie to get within one of Lehman. He has answered the bogey at number five, Jim. He certainly has. Back to back birdies at six and seven. And Kenny, as we come on the air at the par five eight hole, this is Mize's fourth shot. Three straight birdies and Mize now is in a tie for the lead at eight under with Tom Lehman. Here's how they stand at this moment. Mize and Lehman at eight under with Olaf Fabel one back. Then Ernie Els who eagled the eighth today at minus four. Tom Kite at four. And Jay Haas went out in 33. Has not had a bogey today. He's five off the pace. Corey Pavin is two under after birdies at eight and ten. Lauren Roberts really solid. He just won last month at Bay Hill. He's two under including one under today. Tom Watson got it to minus three at one point and then three bogeys on the front dropped him back to even par. Greg Norman, you saw him miss the short one at two. He has slipped all the way back to plus three. In fact, he had a 26 hole stretch without a birdie end when he finally made one at the eighth today. But it's Mize and Lehman at this point, and we go out to the action at nine. Pat Summerall with Ken Venturi. This is Jim McGovern for birdie. Look at that speed. Look at that result. And he needs it. He needs it, Pat. He started the day at three under, went back to even, and that got him back to one under. His first Masters playing with Ian Baker Finch.
is also for birdie. Tough hole. He saw it out at three under, and he is still at three under. The best. scoreboard has him at two. That's the best second shot of the day by far. We have never seen one that close all day. We haven't seen one within 20 feet. That'll get him back to three under. Total of five birdies today at nine. Ian Baker Finch. Back at eight. Eighth hole, par five of 535 yards. Tom Lehman, 260 yards away. This green, you can see the little saddle right there. The green's way around to the left. Tom hits it a long way. He hooks the ball. He's going to try to get this thing running back into this kidney-shaped green that's got a huge mound on the left-hand side of it. Always find out the last day how you start off, and Tom started off very well. And you can see that large mound that this green wraps around, and he has got a very difficult shot. From about 20 feet short of that pin, it goes straight down to the flag stick. We've had the same wind here now for the last couple of days, so I think these guys are starting to get an idea now of what's going on. Tom Weisskopf, uh, you've been short left, I know, a couple of times on this hole. What are we looking for in this pitch shot? Well, he has to respect, uh, you know, the uh, slope, Gary, and protecting himself, he has to play behind the hole and try to putt back uphill. Trying to get cute with his shot isn't going to wind up with any success. Now, Jose Maria Olathabal, well, he cranked one here. He's only got 210 yards left and a perfect angle. He's down the right side. Minus seven, one shot out of the lead. Boy, that was a good looking swing. Sounded awful solid. He kicked that mound. That's a fine golf shot right there. Excellent. That'll be straight downhill to the, to the hole from that point. But he is two on a par five. If you can remember, he made an eagle here yesterday. He had a magnificent shot about three feet. And let's go to 11. And here is 24 year old Ernie Ells. This is for birdie. Oh, he is a factor playing in his first Masters at the age of 24. The young man from South Africa. Now at four under, he eagled the eighth hole to go from two to minus four. Here at the beginning of Amen Corner and the 11th playing typically difficult in the final round, having yielded only one birdie thus far. Ernie Ells will stay at four under four off the lead to the ninth gazing up the hill Larry Mize and Tom Kite par four 435 yards as the tee shot comes downhill and if you can get it far enough the second shot is uphill both players Mize and Kite are both 150 yards and Pat we have not seen anybody get it close that that putt that uh, Baker Finch had that was for par. Oh, it we, was. We were misinformed in the telephone. And uh, no one, you watch it. The hole today is 36 feet from the front, but at 12 feet from the pin, you lose it down the hill, you'll be a good 50 feet away. So everybody's been landing on the bottom shelf and hitting, and you can hear the ball hit up here in the tower. Let's see what happened to Tom Kite. Everybody here is bailing long. They never want to be short. Short almost has five written all over it. Everybody's been leaving themselves 35, 40 footers coming down the hill. Now watch this ball hit. Every ball seems to wind up in the same position. Way back there. This is one of the most treacherous pin placements I can imagine because you just don't fool with it. Anything short of it, as we've watched it 
12 feet short of the hole, it starts to roll and it'll just come right down the hill off the green a good 10, 15 yards. And from above the hole where Kite is, is treacherous. Number nine has produced four birdies so far today, and 18 in that easy position has produced zero to eight. Somewhere over those humps is a flag, and to get there, it is absolutely like the bottom of a slide pitching it to. And while he's looking at this, let's go back to nine. And yeah, now Mize is ready. 150 yards. And again, look for this to be long. And really long. He carried it way back there. He was at least a club off. At eight now. You can see him just lift his arm straight up in the air. Really, you can't yeah, see. Yeah. Almost. almost. Andy Martinez's his caddy gave him an almost. That'll be a quick putt right now. We're deadlocked. Larry Mize, Tom Lehman. Straight down the hill. You want to see fast? Watch this. Can't possibly get there, can it? Whoa. Grow hair, ball. Grow hair. Okay, perfect. He's about two feet by the hole. Now he was a good 25 feet away and he didn't take that putter back, oh, an inch, inch and a half just to get it going. You could slip down that hill they're walking right there. Let's go to 12. And Ernie yells. Hold today playing at 165. Oh, that is terrific. I'm not sure whether he was courageous or foolish, but uh, he's got a birdie possibility would be the first of the day. We go to eight. Well, Tom got a real good read right there off <clears throat> Ola Thobble's eagle run at it. Just get to the left hand side of the hole. And passionately hit this ball. OK, look like he just totally slowed down, didn't it? Hitting it. Look at this, look at this, it's gonna go to the right. Whoa. Whoa, okay. You can see how defensive the game of putting is out here at Augusta National, and let's go find one on nine. Here's the repeat of number eight, watch this. Slow down now, slow Hit down. Hit the hole. That was Tom Kite and his effort at birdie, and that's a good putt. just have to be patient with those putts you just can't what happens here there's three things that these greens do Pat they'll test your stroke they'll test your nerve and they'll test your patience Two eight. straight up the hill pretty good look right there this is for a birdie And a three-way tie now. Larry Mize, Tom Lehman, if he can make this putt, and Jose Maria Olathabal, the Spaniard, who is number one on the order of merit in Europe right now. Let's go forward to nine. One of those with a share of the lead, Larry Mize, the local favorite. He got a wonderful read from Tom Kite. He knows the speed. Now he just has to figure out the line. It's quite an advantage on a putt like that. It's that difficult to have someone go before you and you can get the speed because really if you go first you're really not positive of the speed Pat. Mize with that silken stroke. That describes it very well. It is as smooth as they get. A world of knowledge. You know, you'll see that short putt, you know, usually you just get up and you knock it in. They take their time on these. You don't see them putting these this length putt very fast. They better take their time to eight again. Tom Lehman for his five. Off to the ninth tee and let's go to the ninth green and Mize will finish. After bogeying five, then birdie six, seven, and chipping in an eight for birdie. 
That is some comeback after bogey. And kite. The hole. Now you can see the hole. So can he. As they head to 10. On the tee at nine. Jose Maria Olathabal. Over the years, this teen area has been lengthy. It used to be up almost close to where the front of the tee is. And this requires the slope of the fairway goes from left to right, and you have to make the ball go right to left. It's a very difficult to fight the eye on this tee shot. This is one of the most difficult tee shots I have found at Augusta National. To fit your eye. You're inclined to go right. Yes, you are. That may be going too much left. That's where you really don't want to be. But the result is okay. Yes. He flirted with the pines, though. Burley Tom Lehman. And Long. Very compact swing. And boy, mm -hmm. we think about yesterday, Pat, when he missed that birdie putt at 17 and then bogeyed 18. He. Let a lot of people back in the picture. Tom excelled on the then Hogan tour to 11. Tom Watson for what would be only the second birdie today. Now uh, you could tell he hit a terrific second shot in at the 11th, but things have not gone well for either Watson or his fellow competitor Raymond Floyd. Tom now in red figures. We go back to nine. And Lehman set. When you. When you stand or tee it up that far left, you can draw the ball. That's a sweeper. That ought to be really long, Pat. It is really long. All the way down to the bottom of the hill. I've never been there except when I pitched out of the trees. That that is really long. You have he won't have anything but a pitching wedge left. Over to 12. Ernie Ells. Who began 1994 with a victory in the Dubai Desert Classic? I think this might mean a little more to him if he could win here. His first appearance at Augusta. And how difficult has the 12th been? Well, we have had thus far 10 double bogeys or worse. And if Ells makes this putt, the first birdie of the day. Vern, if he gets this in, and with 13 and 15, if he can post that score quickly, he may have a chance. Absolutely can. He's got a chance. Big hole thus far was the eagle on the eighth. And now we go back to 10. And on the tee of this 485 yard hole, Larry Mize. Perfect rhythm as always. The object is to take it down that slope, let it catch the slope, pick up speed. And that's how you turn a 485 yard hole into about a 425 yard hole to 13. <laughs> This is the third shot for Greg Norman. Some 220 yards to the pin. He drove in the hazard to the left pitch to this point. Down. Well executed. Beautiful golf shot. And he continues to have his problems today as he did yesterday. Back to 10. Tom Kite. A little quicker swing than normal, but I think he likes the shape of the ball flight. Perfectly positioned. Well, Peter, Larry Mize looking for a second green jacket. He is tied for the lead with Olaf Fabel, who was a runner up here in 91, and Lehman, who last year as a Masters rookie was third. All at eight under par in the final round of the 1994 Masters. Well, look, on the first page, you go from eight to one under par. And some of the other scores, grand total right now of 10 golfers under par, two at even, Faxon and Roberts, and then John Houston, who won Doral and has played well here in the past. Ray Floyd at two over. And Seve today shot 71 to finish at plus four. It looks like top 24, by the way, 
be somewhere in that plus five neighborhood. Back out to the ninth hole. Hole of Thumb. From 155 yards, Pat and I expect this to be long like every other shot we have seen. He is coming at a different angle. He's coming over the corner of the bunker. He doesn't want to fool the bunker, doesn't want to be short. So I look for this to be long, which is the safest shot. Cannot afford to put it in the bunker because you're looking at five right away. His last five Masters finishes. Good play, good smart play. Don't feel bad about that, Jose. He does. Well, he shouldn't. That's a very popular place, and he can't afford to leave it any shore that come down the hill. Now, Tom Lehman, who has hit a huge drive, he's 120 yards. And again, I, I would think that he would have, he's got two things. He could hit a sand wedge that far, but if you put too much bite on it, you'll back it off the green. 120 yards at nine for second shot is something we don't say very often. Well, it's, it, it plays 435 yards to 10. From 185 yards, Larry Mize. Stance in the fairway calls for a right to left shot. Pin today accepts that kind of shot very nicely. And that will run all the way through the green as many before it have today. It'll trickle all the way down to slightly longer grass that I have a difficult time calling rough to nine. And Lehman with a pitching wedge. Don't leave it short. And that will be long like everybody else. That is the safety valve. Everybody is just protects from leaving it short. To 10. 10 yards closer than Larry Mize. Tom Kite has 175. Should be a perfect six iron for him. Well balanced follow through position. And a superbly executed golf shot by Tom Kite leaves him 12 to 14 feet for birdie three. This hole has claimed many people today. Greg Norman, again, another double bogey earlier today. To 12. Raymond Floyd, who's not had a good day. Oh, it just got better. And back to back birdies from back to back twosomes. Ray Floyd. Now at plus one, start of the day at one under. We go back to the ninth. Lehman and Olathaba, the last two of the day, have arrived at the treacherous green, both coming downhill. Lehman has the longer putt, but he has the easier putt because it's, it has very little break. But Olafabo has got a shorter putt, but it has a huge break. It'll break a good, oh, I would say, good six feet. I think you're right. Crowd gathering, following those last two. If you take a look on the screen there, that where that flag is and how much that slope is, that's why you've seen every single player hit it on that shot. Once it hits, it comes in because it's very difficult to stop a, a ball with the green above your feet. 13. That's Ernie Els. Way left off the tee here at 13. In the azaleas. Hoping to find his ball somewhere in there. If he doesn't, it's a lost ball. He'll have to go all the way back to the tee. What a great opportunity this hole presented for Ernie because he was really on a roll just burning 12 and four was eminent. I would think in his mind it was necessary to have any chance probably of catching. You know Tommy with his length or anyone with that length there's no need to flirt with the left side. No there isn't Kenny because you can play a straight drive and let the contour of the fairway kick the ball around the corner with that kind of length. Tom Lehman has looked over this one a long time. Birdie putt. The leader's comparison. Front nine, back nine. 
Mize has excelled on the front. Struggled, if even is struggling, on the back. I bet you could take the last 10 groups, last 20 players, and you could put a 10 foot circle in the back of this green, and everyone would be in that circle right where Tom Lehman is putting down the hill. Long. Not the putt. Now take your break. If it gets there, it's got a chance. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Just shaved it. That would have been almost as good as the one he made yesterday at 16. Wonderful, wonderful leg putt. Just a hair slower. It finds the bottom of the cup. Olathabu got a read on the speed, but it's it's entirely different putt. If he kind of oh, yeah. kind of opens the blade and hits it against the hill, the ball won't pick up the speed and it'll be short. If you kind of hook the putt, it picks up speed and goes past. Over to ten. Chipping for birdie. That shot offered multiple options, and Larry Mize chose the right one for him. Beautiful shot. Back to nine. Ola Thabo trying to get that six foot or more break it settled in his mind. He's backed off about three times. He can't make up his mind, but he's got a ticket to the top of the hill. I, I would say, Pat, that this, I would say more than, I'd say this is close to eight, nine foot break where he'll start it. Well, look where he's lined up. And the hole way up left hand top of your picture. Looks good. Looks Look really this. good. Looks really good. <laughs> Both of them singe the edge. Now those are championship putts. Both of them. That only comes with experience to 10. There you see Larry Mize having just completed his fourth shot for par on the 10th hole. Walks over to 11 to begin his trek to the championship to back to nine. That's Olathabu. And that's par. The only thing those two putts didn't do is they didn't go in. The 10. This was earlier Tom Kite. Sometimes the fear of three putting is stronger than your desire to make par to nine. Layman. That's his par. And the co-leader heads for 10. Mize at eight under. Ola Thabel and Lehman at that same figure and then L's in trouble at five. Well, the most exciting last nine holes in golf is straight ahead. And already today down on Amen Corner, a piece of history was made by Jeff Maggard. For the first time in Masters history, the famed 13th yielded that rarest of birds, a double eagle. Maggart holding a three iron from 220 yards, only the third albatross ever at the Masters. Bruce Devlin in 67, of course, Sarazen back in 35. And let's go out to 10 now. Here's Peter Costas. With a three wood, Olafabel. This hole sets up beautifully for Jose Maria's game that he's been struggling with for about 18 months. He's been working on it. I think just about now he's got it instinctive where it's a part of him. He's swinging so nicely. And there's a look at Jeff Maggart's card. Look at the back nine. Two twos, three fives. A roller coaster ride through the back nine at Augusta. Now also on the tee with a fairway wood, Tom Lehman. Grew up on a golf course, not indifferent from this, at least as far as tee shots, wide open and hilly. Learned to hit it hard and then hoped that he had a good wedge game.
Beautifully positioned and long for a three wood. Kenny, I think he hit that three wood off of nine as well. It was, if you can hit as far as you can with that three wood, I wouldn't worry about that driver too often. Back to you, Jim. All right, Larry Mize got on a roll, Peter, on the front nine, first at the sixth. This for birdie. And then at seven, the short par four. What a sweet swing, right behind the hole. Set up another birdie there at seven. Then at eight, this is fourth shot on the par five. Man who grew up just a few miles from here. Larry Mize with three straight birdies in that roll got him to eight under. And in that current three-way tie as we go out to the 11th. And that is a bogey for Ian Baker Finch. Second shot in this par four found the small pond to the left. Pitched within uh, about 15 feet and made the putt, but uh, loses a shot to par. Now Jim McGovern, his fellow competitor, hit the flagstick with his second shot and is this far away from birdie, and he would get back to two under for the tournament. This would be the third birdie of the day, joining Faxon and Watson. And Jim McGovern enjoying his first four official rounds of Augusta National. Now at two under and uh, one third of the way through Amen Corner. There's the pond that Ian Baker Finch found. Memorable, of course, for among other reasons, when Raymond Floyd drowned his hopes for a second green jacket there in the playoff at Faldo in 1990. And this uh, most appreciative gallery that gathers in this wonderful spot where you can actually, if you sit here all day, you can watch the second shots on 11, the putts on 11, the tee shots and putts on 12, and the drives from 13. And indeed, if you crane your neck, you can turn around and see the second shots on 13. Now the 12th. Playing today at 165 hole cut back right. Let's go to 10. Where Jose Maria is surveying the situation from 205 yards. Some people win golf tournaments because they like winning. Others win them because they really hate to lose. And I would put Jose in that category. And I think that's the right attitude for a major championship. He's worried about the lie. We'll go to 12. Where Jim McGovern is worried about the wind. Still concerned about it. Back at the 11th hole, Larry Mize, crest of the hill. Way back, he's 200 yards away. Comes up short. Flirted with that pond to the 10th. Well, Jose, as I think, finally got himself committed to this shot, as you must be. 205 yards. If he can hit this out to the right, it's one of those rare instances where the green will actually funnel the ball towards the hole. Beautifully done, beautifully positioned right below the hole. To 11. And Tom Kite, 185 yards out. Tom, four back now. Oh. 
Turn over. Urging it to come left. Stays right, but hole high. Back to the tenth. Now Tom Lehman, 195 yards. This setup is perfect for his game. Just hit it toward the right middle portion of the green. Let the ball funnel back toward the back left pin placement. Eight pars and one birdie on the front nine. That will have to release a little bit. Beautifully done. But not an easy birdie putt. To 12. Moments ago, this was Jim McGovern. After those moments of indecision. And that is the safe play. On the 12th with a birdie opportunity, we have a three-way tie at the top on the back nine at Augusta. Well, you saw just a moment ago, Lehman with a beautiful approach at the 10th. This is the first time since he's been on the American tour that he led an event going into the last round, and he has not made a mistake so far. Eight pars and a birdie, really handling the pressure. In fact, early this morning, he appeared at a local church to talk about his priorities in his life. He said God, family, and then golf is somewhere way down on the list. But right now, he is tied for the lead with two others. Greg Norman continues to fall back. He's at plus five. Nick Faldo, not a factor this year at eight over. And we go back out to the 11th, Vern Lundquist. Larry Mize, third shot. <laughs> Young man who grew up near here, worked on the third scoreboard at the age of 13, won this championship in 1987 on this hole and is tied for the lead. We go back to the 10th. Jose Maria Olothabel is looking over right now to the 15th tee to see if, yeah, it is. It's Greg Norman's over there getting ready to hit his tee shot. So Jose will back off as we look at his scorecard from the front nine. Impeccable. Seven birdie, seven pars, two birdies. No fives on the card, and he would love to have that on the back nine as well as we go forward to 11. Tom Kite. Never a winner here. Twice a runner-up. He finished second in 1983, tied with Ben Crenshaw when Seve Ballesteros won the championship. And then in uh, that memorable 1986 classic that Jack Nicklaus won, Tom had a chance to tie and force a playoff with a putt at the 18th. And couldn't quite get it done. This is for birdie. Is it quick? Not quite that quick to 10. Just in time for the birdie putt of Jose Maria. Oh. <laughs> I don't know that you can Hit a putt much better than that. Some go in, some don't. But that was beautifully struck. <coughs> These greens are so fast. To 13. The four shot from Ernie Els, 230 yards. Well struck. Beautifully played. I think his chances were lost when he drove into the trees to the left at 11. I mean at 13. Back to 11. All right, Tom, and here's Tom. And this is for par. Well done. to 10. Tom Lehman for three. Oh, 
of that putt has been misplayed virtually all day long. That was a good stroke. Not quite read properly, but it's a par four nonetheless as the final pairing makes its way to the 11th tee in the beginning of Amen Corner. And folks, the tournament is on. To you at 11, Vern. Where Larry Mize is trying to stay at eight under. He's got this left, and it's not an easy putt. <laughs> nice up and down. And we go to the 15th. Where Jay Haas has this short cut for his birdie to go to three under par. Ooh, ooh. Well, he bogeyed the 13th and uh, only a par here with a sad three putts from the front of the green. Could have been in the picture. Back to the 12th. And the gallery stands in acknowledgement of accomplishment for both Tom Kite and for Larry Mize. And now they must confront the reality of the 12th and Jim McGovern this for his par. And McGovern stays at minus two. Meanwhile, on the tee of the 11th, Jose Maria Olafabo drive through that shoot of trees up over the crown of a hill, and if you catch it right, it'll kick down a downslope and leave you only a short iron shot to this kidney-shaped green at Amen Corner this week. Well, he's taking the left hand side. And he's safe. Now, Tom Lehman. Tom, who has yet to win on the American tour, of course, had those uh, Ben Hogan victories in 1991. He qualified for the U.S. Open in 1992 and finished sixth there at Pebble Beach. That's how he got into Augusta last year. And once here, his first appearance made the most of it. A four way tie for third. Thus the invitation to return. Yes. And he has really displayed a placid, even tempered demeanor as he made his way around Augusta today. Why not with drives like that? Perfect. And now the 12th. So seemingly benign at 165 yards, but you take into consideration the presence of Ray's Creek, three bunkers, a very shallow, hard green, and the wind. Back right and down the swale. And a look of concern. And a wry acknowledgement of where that ball is. To 15. Corey Pavin with four metal going at it from 215 yards at two under par. And that will go back into the water. There you go. Bingo. To 12. Tom Kite. Well, that starts left. 
and it stays left so neither golfer found the green. Mize back right down in the swale Tom kite to the left. Dry we go to 13. This 35 footer remains for Ernie Els to make par. Not to be and after a lost ball and the penalty. That's a six four to 16. And this is the tee shot of Jay Haas. 180 yards, 40 yards longer today than yesterday. This bar three, traditional back left pin placement, and that's going to come down the hill towards the hole. Couldn't be very close. And we've seen a lot of that this afternoon. A lot of golf balls within a couple of feet of this hole. So you could see a turning point right there. There you see it, Larry Mize, Jose Maria Olathabo, and Tom Lehman tied at eight under par in a virtual three-man tournament. Unless Ernie Els can perform some miracles, looking down the list, only nine players under par. Sevi Ballesteros and Ben Crenshaw, previous champions, in at four over. Bernhard Langer, the defending champion at five. And Greg Norman, a very disappointing five over pars. He's uh, over the 15th green in two shots. Nick Price, desperately disappointing tournament for him at 10 over. Fuzzy Zeller, the 1979 champion, also at 10 over. Sandy Lyle, the 1988 champion at 11 over. Constantino Rocca, first time here. The Italian, Ian Woosnam, and uh, a former champion also, Daly, very disappointing. But uh, right in front of me, the fourth shot of Corey Pavin at 15. Whew. That was close to going in. And now over to 11. And here's Jose Maria Olafable's second shot, and the pond, a problem. One reason Nick Price finished at 10 over par is because he found that pond here. And then he found the water in the second. Now, Ken, that water is a factor here, right? Vern, with that pin position, you want to drive to the right-hand side of the fairway so you give yourself more room. There is no way that he could possibly put this at the hole. He has to be right side of the green, take the water out of play. This is an important shot for him. He can't afford to put in the water left. He starts that well right. Now it comes back and safely in the center of the green. He will feel quite fulfilled with a four. And we go forward to the 12th, Tom Kite. Second shot from the back to the green. Now. Hopes may be evaporating, but not so for Tom Lehman. Middle of the fairway, 165 yards away. Second shot at the 11th. He didn't like it. He got ahead of that one. Well, all in all, not terrible. Well, all in all, pretty good, as a matter of fact. And that water will do that to you, Vern. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now, Larry Mize. Ken, what about this shot? Well, he's got two choices. He can, if he has a good lie, he'll probably flop it up on top. If he didn't hit bump and run, but with a law off the club, it looks like he's going to try to flop it just, just up on the fringe and let the ball roll down the hole. No. Nope. Chili dipped it. That's what happens with that shot. The other one, I do believe the bump and run is the safest, best shot that. You can't do that if you're going to bump and run it, but you can do that if you're going to use a lofty club. You must remember that the players walk where that ball was. That's where the players walk to go to the 13th tee. Right. Well, 
Larry Mize. A long way from his bar. And we go forward to 15. Where Greg Norman has this putt for a birdie for his first birdie of the tournament at the 15th hole. Will it? Just so at last he makes a birdie, but it's too little too late. You see the first 35 holes, 10 birdies, and the last just a mere two back to 12. And Tom Kite's long, long par putt. Tom will give away to Larry Mize. Mize back right with the tee shot. Well, he does have uh, what was described as a silken stroke on the surface of the greens. But he's chipping. Kenny. He is very good with his club and this takes commas a good chipper will take chip if you're not good you'll take that putter out. Hold on ball. Mm hmm. That much for bogey. To 16. Greg Norman. 180 yard shot. <coughs> nice little draw. We'll bring it round the bunker. <laughs> Lovely stroke. Too little, too late, however. Birdie at 15. Great chance for Birdie at 16. To 11. And here is Tom Lehman, 35 years of age. Playing in his second Masters, currently tied for the lead. This for Birdie, but he's a long way away. Oh, that's really terrific. Native of Austin, Minnesota, and here's a native of Augusta, Georgia, for bogey. <laughs> Nevertheless, his picturesque par three has uh, jumped up and grabbed another victim. This time, Larry Myers with the bogey, and we go to 14. Vern, this has been bogeyville today. Ernie L's second shot from only 90 yards, longest drive of the day, and this pin is so close to the front edge. That's a third wedge, a 60 degree wedge to hold the green. Back to 13. Jim McGovern, eagle opportunity from 60 feet. Uphill will break to his right. Had the line back to 11. Jose Maria Olafable for birdie. Mm, goodness. <laughs> He's got a good four, four and a half, five feet left. Last two in the field now tied for the lead after Larry Mize bogeyed the 12th. And Ernie Ells had those problems, of course, at the 13th. Now Ola Fable. Vern, I think what happened there is he watched when go, uh, he watched Lehman come sideways, which is faster. Let's go to 13. T shot, Larry Mize. Good pitch. Good pitch. Going through the fairway. Ooh. 
We'll have to wait and see. Back to 11 for par. Well, when he was standing back in the middle of the fair, the uh, left side of the fairway, not in the middle, 200 yards away, I think he uh, was thinking to himself, if I can just grab four and get out of here, I'll be fine. The 13. Tom Kite, tee shot here at 13, par five. Keep on. Hard. 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 Beautiful tee shot. Leave him roughly 200 yards to the pin. Back to 11. Tom Lehman. Lehman and Olafabel one third of the way through Amen Corner. They are still tied at the top with Larry Mize trailing by a shot. As you look at that first page of the leaderboard, two players on the first page playing in their first Masters. Ernie Els, 24-year-old former rugby player from South Africa who hopes to play on the American circuit by next year. And Jim McGovern from Oradell, New Jersey, who triple bogeyed the sixth hole today and then has come back big with birdies at 8, 9, and 11. And we go out to 12 again with Bert Lundquist. Or the Spanish son of a greenskeeper in quest of his first green jacket is on the tee. Jose Maria Olatopel. Not bad. To 14. Ernie Els, after a beautiful second shot for a rare birdie. What a good stroke. Excellent putting stroke to 16. Greg Norman to record a second consecutive birdie. Gives him back to three over par. Alas, and to no avail. Back to the 12. Tom Lehman said when he grew up, he used to pretend he was Arnold Palmer and pretend he was winning the Masters. Now he's tied for the lead and he stands at the 12th tee. Got some work left. Both of them do. Olaf Abel and Tom Lehman. Hasn't barred the hole yet this week and had that uh, bogey yesterday. And we go to 13. There you see the situation. 230 yards remains to the pin for Larry Mize. Water in front and as well on the right side of this hole. 206 yards, however, to the front of the green. He's got a little bit of an awkward line. Depends a lot on the lie, really, how you play this shot. Larry's. I think definitely going to go for it. Left is your out. Left of the green. To put the ball on the green from this situation would be excellent. Beautiful golf shot right here. Beautiful golf shot. Superb golf shot. Boy, I want to tell you, from a conservative natured person, that shows me some some real fortitude. A great shot. Boy, he only has about 12 or 15 feet left. However, we'll go forward to 15, Ben. Raymond Floyd par 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 on three previous days. This is his third shot after a three iron from 205 yards. The third eagle of the tournament. I was saying yesterday, best chipper I'd ever seen. 
He's done it again. Mike Stanley, Constantino Rocker, and now Ray Floyd of Eagle to 15th, back to 13. Tom Kite, second shot, 215 yards to the pin. Probably a three iron. Well struck also, right toward the center of the green. Will it hold? Good golf shot, though. Excellent shot. And the proper shot. By no means is he out of it. Larry Mize hit the best shot so far today here. What a grand shot that was. Back to 15. Tom Watson has hit the water four straight days. This is his par putt. And <laughs> that's the second time he's got up and down for par. He's gone 8 5, 6 5, and visited the water each day, chipping back into the water on the first day for an ugly eight. What an extraordinary performance. Back to the 12. And it's a little quieter back here in Amen Corner where Tom Wayman has uh, considered the possibilities and concocted a plan. For birdie. Use the putter. Oh boy. So a moment ago he's gone bogey birdie bogey thus far. In the first three rounds here at the 12th. Next will be Olaf Abel. Jose Maria has a second place finish here. He finished second in 1991. Memorable last day when he had a seven at the sixth hole. Otherwise would have won the championship. Now this is his second shot. Likewise with a putter. Well, he knows he's got three. And he's gone par par the first two legs of Amen Corner. Stays at minus eight. Unaware, of course, Larry Mize had that terrific second shot at 13 and is uh, staring Eagle in the face. Now Tom Lehman, Lehman for par. Native of Minnesota, attended the University of Minnesota, now lives in Arizona. We go to 16. Tom Watson on the tee, 180 yards. You're the man, Tom. Same crisp swing as ever, but that 15th hole has played havoc with him. Good shot there. This is the 15th hole, Ernie oh, Evans oh, oh, from 185 yards, very far left of the fairway. And that's down, that's in the water, I can assure you of that. There she goes, and the par fives where he should have such a great advantage have killed him. Back to 12. Tom Lehman for par. Stood over the ball, backed off, looked at it again. Lead belongs to Olafabo. And for the four days, Tom Wayman goes bogey, birdie, bogey, bogey at the 12th. But the two par fives are still in front. Let's go to 13 right now, Tom. Tom Kite, 30 feet for Eagle. Big break to his right, extremely fast. Boy, he had it online. He had it tracking all the way. 
Interesting. Tom walked up there, took something out of his pocket, which was his uh, diagram of the green, and I'm sure he has a bunch of arrows in there because he's very confused when he was looking over his 30-footer, and I'm sure he marks down which way the ball is always going to break. Now, you'll have to stand back and watch. I can't tell you how great Larry Mize's shot was. I mean, it was up in the air and high but from the tee now. Olothabo. Trouble lurks left. Eagle. Everybody has misread that putt. It just doesn't turn, and he's got at least three and a half feet left. Ran that ball three and a half, even almost four feet by. I think uh, Jose has found somebody's lap or in a chair or something. It's a little tough here when you have to putt through a shadow. Conditions couldn't be perfect. More perfect today. No wind on the tee now. Tom Lehman, probably a three wood, trying to turn this ball right to left. Turn. Come on. I think he's left it out too. That'll that'll be interesting now to see. Larry Mize, three and a half feet, cannot give the hole away. Beautiful putt. Now we have two at eight under for the lead. Trying to concentrate as hard as he can. Trying to remain calm. Tom Kite now. Just a foot and a half left, but as you can see, they take a lot of time. They give nothing for granted at these speeds here at Augusta. Good four. Well, 12 was a story again this year, not because of the water, but both Mize and Lehman made bogeys there. Mize gets it back, though, at 13, two-way tie. Larry Mize with the driver. You don't even have to, I don't have to tell you where it is. Listen to the crowd. Big tee shot, too. Needs it on this hole with the front right pin. That away looks, looks smiley happy. Back to 13, Tom. Huh? That's the ball that's lying up against the pine straw in the right rough. Let's listen and see if we can hear what they're discussing. What he has is 270 yards to the pin, so he really has no option at going at the green. Let's be very careful when he starts moving things because if that ball changes its position ever so slightly, it's a penalty stroke. Kind of like playing pickup sticks. I guess we'll all be the judge if the ball moves. The touch of a surgeon is required here. 
I think the reason why he's taking the chance probably is the fact that he has to try to grip this ball with his club and to do that he has to try to re remove as much of the loose impediments that surround his ball as possible because as you can see he's got a it's like look, looking through a jail door through the trees and if you go left through the trees the fairway runs real hard right to left toward the stream so his maybe his only possible play is going to be way out to the right with a huge hook or possibly even trying to put the ball out in front of the 14th tee. But that leaves him no angle at the pin. Layman now, Tom has roughly 230 yards left to the pin. He's through the fairway. Yes, they're asking the gallery now, way on the right of this hole to remove themselves from that area so he can advance this ball up the right. Tommy, I believe he has to go the right. If you look at the other way, it looks like he's coming out of the door of a log cabin. I mean, he has to go right. He has no choice. Ken, there's another series of trees, as you well know. There's five trees clustered about 120 yards ahead of him. So he has to negotiate those. There you can see those trees straight ahead in the right-hand side of your picture. He could stymie himself again if he doesn't play past those trees. He's taking a lot of loft that helps create spin if that's his choice which can curve the ball quicker more loft is easier to curve. Really he doesn't have to hit the ball much further than about 100 yards that would give him a very good angle into this pin from there. He's definitely going to hook this ball. Keep it down low, not to hit the trees in front. Back up. He was even right before. I don't want to hear it. No, that's right. Forward to 15 first. Jim McGovern from 210 yards at the 500 yard. Par right, five, three on. Get up. Well, it's held miraculously at the very top of the slope. And he has two putts for a nice birdie to 13. I think what we're gonna see here is he's gonna keep this down very low not to get it up into the air to the right of those trees and all he has to do is okay. really put the ball in the air for about 75 yards. Then the contour that exists up on the right hand side of this hole will feed the ball down toward the center of the fairway and put them in wedge distance. Perfectly played, well executed. As you can see that that contour throws that ball, keeps throwing it, the further it keeps coming to the left, the better the angle is for his third shot. And he's back there at about 110 yard range, so he's, he's in birdie distance opportunity even from there. Now Lehman, 230 yards. He's not stymied. First forward to 14. Tom Kite, 125 yards. Very, very few players can hold this green. That's office hours for the pros today. And he too is frustrated with it. Kite even par for the day, four back to 13. 
the ideal place for Tom to try to play this shot is right over the top of his cap. That is the left side of this green because if you miss it left, he's still in the game. Short and right is a no-no. And that's, he's just missed it just to the left off the left front of the green in the swale. Not a very difficult pitch from there. Good, good smart shot. Well, the standings, the numbers on the left, today's round on the right, best round in the clubhouse, Jay Haas with a 69 in at minus three. Also, John Houston shot 69 to finish at one under par. Top 10 finish for Houston. Top 24 and ties get invited back for the 95 Masters. Looks like that figure will be at plus five. Everybody at plus five or better qualifies for next year. As we go back out to 13, and Tommy, you were talking about this week, uh, about playing conditions at Augusta. I know you wanted to comment on that too. Well, they're perfect right now. And from 110 yards, the third shot of Jose Maria Lauthavo. Tied at this point, Larry Mize. Expect this ball left of the hole. Well played. Good smart shot. 12 feet remains for his birdie opportunity. Uh, Jim, uh, you know, a lot of comments have been made, and I just think, isn't major championship golf supposed to be fairly challenged to the players by 4 to 14? Well, Don, you talk about challenge. Watch this big swooping right to left breaking putt. Down the hill. Now it actually goes up a little incline, and now back down. And that's really... Not too bad. We've seen players hit it 10 feet past the hole from there. The 17. Tom Kite hit a beautiful little wedge in here about eight feet away. Excuse me, that is Tom Watson, and he just parks it right in the middle of the hole. Gets back under par to minus one. Egging on his playing partner there, Raymond Floyd. And let's go back to 13. Tom Lehman has been up here exercising what his options might be. It's really a pretty simple little pitch. Just off the green. He has a pretty good lie. Some 80 feet from the hole. Probably takes something lofted up there at least 10 to 15 feet onto the green. It does have a big break to the right. But everything feeds from this point on a direct line to the hole from where Tom is. So this is Augusta. This is what it's all about when you miss these greens, these little pitches and chips. And this is a must, I would think, up and down. Tom Lane. Well short. I think he just gripped it a little bit too much, put too much spin on it. Now he's got about 11 feet just inside Jose's ball. Both putts are somewhat similar. It's downhill. Breakers to the right. Forward 18. Greg Nolan for par. He's short of the green, chipped it up short. And there are two disappointing rounds right there, Pat. Those last two days, everyone said for all week and for months, if you could only get off to a good start. Back to 13. Olathopel. 12 feet. Birdie opportunity to take the lead. This will break to his right, and it's fast.
Well, when you think of all the birdies and even the double eagle today that the players have made, not to make four on this hole might be a wasted opportunity. 14. For par. We have seen so many bogeys here at 14 today, and Mai is another victim. Mai is still with a little golf left for a five. Players here have been forced to hit a driver off the tee, where earlier in the week they were hitting three woods. The reason why they're hitting drivers so they can get a shorter shot, put more spin on the ball to try to hold this green. Very few players can. So Mize drops out of a tie with Olaf Fabel, moves to seven under, one behind. But a lot can happen at 15. Back to 13. Layman, 11 feet for birdie. And his share of the lead. Nope. Not even close. A lot of golf left, though. A lot of things can and I'm sure will happen. Thomas, keep your head up. As they walk across the bridge on up to the 14th tee. While we have a moment, let's run down the field. 51 players qualified for the weekend. Olaf Fabel sits atop right now at eight under. Corey Pavin has finished his final round with a 70, minus two. Ernie Ells having dropped back to minus two. Chip Beck, you see at plus three. Could have been contending perhaps today had it not been for a quadruple bogey seven at the 12th on Saturday. And back out to the play at the 14th, Bobby Clampett. Olaf Abel, he's had trouble with this shot. I played with him in the third round last week. And he, when he tries to draw the ball, oftentimes he'd leave it right like he did on the last hole. That, oh, it looks like that's turning beautifully. Low and should be long. Excellent tee shot. Seems like he's elevated his game this week on a different level than he had last week, even though he finished second. There's a beautiful look at the scoreboards here. Tom Lehman, I spoke with his wife earlier today, and she shared an interesting story about uh, their daughter, Rachel, who's four years old, who walked in on Tom praying at his bedside this morning. And she said, Daddy, why are you praying? And he said, because I've got to play golf today. Well, can't you stay here and play with me? Tom's a devoted family man. And set a beauty here at 14 as well, past all the fobble. Back to the studio with Jim Nance. Well, five of the last six years, uh, Bobby. This tournament has been won by an international player, only Fred Couples in 92, breaking that streak in the last six years. Prior to that, it was Larry Mize in 87 and Jack Nicholas in 86. And the man from Spain leads by one as we go back out to 15 with Ben Wright. And Larry Mize at the 500 yard par five. Such a smooth swing. Beautifully played. He's avoided the mounds and he has uh, about 220 yards the flag stick to 18. Raymond Floyd and Tom Watson have arrived. What an ovation they got. I've never seen Pat the 18 playing so short. Tom Watson looked like he, he could almost throw the ball on the green and hit it way past 
And believe it or not, we have had 41 players come through 18 that have not had a single birdie. That's what Watson will try for. A birdie. Floyd watching. Slow down. Well, they both have tough par putts lift. Tom Watson was saying earlier that he felt that he is going to win before the year is out, and I believe him. I really do. I think he's playing very well. I think it's just he's just a hair away from just breaking the winner's circle. Just depends on how much he chooses to play. Raymond Floyd, who said he was exhausted when he got here, he won, of course, last week. But certainly a, a wonderful showing by Raymond. Par, he, par left. He was on top of the hill just like Tom was, and he putted. He was on the left hand side of the green, Tom was on the right side. And he putted to the here. Well, it was for par. After that fine chip in at the 15th hole for Eagle. To get him from even to two under. And this putt is for a round of 71. Nope. You don't see him miss many of those. No. Nope. A uh, good tournament for Raymond Floyd, nevertheless. One under. You were saying Tom Watson believes he's going to win before this year is over. It's this kind of putt that's held him back. Well, that's the ones when he used to run those by for five years. He was averaging under 28 putts around. That's why he was winning everything then. Call it, Pat. It just that's it. But I'll tell you what, he'll find a way. He's too good not to win. And if hard Again. work will get it done, he will. You're right. To 14. Jose Maria Olafabel, 135 yeah. yards, nine iron, and with a one-shot lead, he must be long past the hole. Huge eight-foot embankment, three yards in front of the flag. comfortable look on his face. Yeah, that's a little bit longer than he would like to be. That ball hit hard on the back of the green. To 15. Larry Mize. A one iron shot from 220 yards. Is that too much club? Afraid so. The other golf ball you might have seen over the green, that of Tom Kite, to 14. Tom Lehman, just over 130. Could be between a pitching wedge and a nine iron for Tom. He'd rather hit a hard shot, try to get the ball up in the air and spin it. Yeah, good angle there, guys. That's probably a pitching wedge. That's a pretty firm swing there for Tom. That's an excellent shot from there. Right on the back fringe. That's about as good as he could do. This hole's only yielded three birdies today. One by Lauren Roberts, who actually was in the trees off the tee and skipped it up the hill to 16. This is a birdie putt for Jim McGovern, who just three putted 15. And what a wonderful first Masters for the young man from Oradell, New Jersey. Jose Maria Olathabal leads out right by one from Larry Mize and Tom Lehman, by four from those at four under. Olathabal leads. He said there's nothing more difficult to do than to relax on the last day. Hopefully what I learned three years ago, I will use to my advantage in the final round. I will try to be calm 
He finished second back in 91 to Ian Woosnam. And now he's on the 14th, five holes to play as we go out to Bobby Clampett. Thanks, Jim. He'll have a good test of his nerves here. Got a little slope in front of him as the ball gets up to the green. Looks to be a nine iron, maybe a pitching wedge. A lot of different options on a shot like this. Oh, he's had a beauty here. Maybe. Oh, my word. I was going to say, if he could put that ball within six, seven feet from there, it would be a heck of a shot to 15. Larry Mize from behind the green, really begging for a birdie now. That pretty good shot, but he's got a ticklish putt. A slider from left to right from there. There you see how he has conquered the par fives this week. And if he makes a, a birdie here, it would be the 22nd of the day. It's almost 50% of the players have made birdie to 14. This is one of the most difficult speed putts on a relatively level green that you can have here. This ball will break a couple feet from right to left. Meanwhile, back to 15. And Tom Kite, his third shot, hit a great three wood from 240 yards to that point. A tremendous second shot and a wonderful chip and uh, virtually certain of his birdie to get to five under. Who knows, he could make three birdies and get into the picture. 14. Lehman admitted being very, very nervous this morning, but he has handled it very well. Only one bogey, one birdie. Very solid, steady round. Been very methodical. A couple times he shot away from the pins, just played for par. Made some good two putts today. Good view of his grip, split handed, index finger down the shaft. Hold down ball. It's going downhill as it gets to the hole. And that's gone some six feet by the hole. You know, Bobby, as we said, and we've said it all week long, and I was saying in the beginning at Saturday that the tournament begins on the back nine on Sunday afternoon, and he is feeling it right now. The 15. Larry Mize must make this birdie. Well, that should have turned to the right, so I can only assume he jerked it a little. And that is a rather sorry par because he only had 210 yards to the flag stick. I think he overclubbed in an effort to make sure he was not in the pond in front to 14. A must. Tom Lehman. With his length, he can get home with a mid to sh short iron on 15. Oh, in the middle. Oh, big putt. Takes a steady nerve to knock those six footers in under these conditions. Now, a little fobble. Two feet. Wasting no time. Oh boy. A lot can happen at 15. As all the fobble and layman take their march there. There you can see the last four holes this week. Olaf Fobble three under, Lehman two under, and Larry Mize has struggled coming in one over.
So advantage to Ola Thabo and Lehman. To 16. Which measures today 180 yards, playing almost its full length. The pin tucked behind the left hand bunker. And for those who like to draw the ball in, it has proved no problem. A lot of players have got it within three feet of the hole. Of course, if you hit it away to the right, the ball will feed down towards the hole. Similarly, the cardinal sin is to hit it in the bunker or, of course, the water, as has happened in the past on no more than, well, two occasions Pavin has put it in the water here when with a chance to win. Of course, there have been four putts from Sebi most uh, particularly. And now on the 15th tee, Jose Maria Olathabal with a one stroke advantage. Mounds right, trees left. Boy, he just swung himself off his feet. And that's coming off the mounds. That's going to be, yes, he's found a flat spot between those mounds. I would say he's uh, 215 yards away, probably. That's about it, I think, 215. Now, Tom Lehman. You must keep away from those mounds. He was way right yesterday. Had to lay up. And now the tension is palpable. Over to 16, and Larry Mize is tee shot. Absolute quiet in this bowl down here at the bottom end of the golf course. That won't uh, be too bad. It'll feed its way down a little, but it's a difficult putt with a big break from the right. Not what you'd call a birdie putt. And that's what he desperately needs now to keep in touch. Having squandered his chance at the 15th. And now Tom Lehman finally. <laughs> Looked like a marvelous swing. Oh, that's a big one. That is at less than 200, I would say 195 yards from the flagstick. So that backing off was uh, very well worthwhile. He collected himself. And now the 16th hole. And rich applause for a perennial bridesmaid, Tom Kite. Ten top ten finishes. His last was when he was tied second to Nicholas in 1986. He'll get his 11th top ten. And, of course, Larry Mize, the hometown favorite, finishing holes this week. The 15th will move into its usual 18th spot, I would say, by the end of the day. But the 16th, very tough. And, of course, the awesome 18th to come. Now we swing away up the hill to the last pairing of the day, Jose Maria Olathabal, who this year was ninth in Tenerife, second in the Andalusian Open, won the Mediterranean Open. So three top tens and three starts in, in Europe put him in the right frame of mind to come here. 
then he was second last week in New Orleans. Tom Lehman, third here last year, was the preeminent player on the Hogan Tour in uh, 1991, and go, we'll go to the 17th. This is Jim McGovern. He triple bogeyed the sixth hole to go to plus one. He is now minus four. What a comeback. This is for a par. Goes to minus three, but having a great Masters first trip here. Hat's a little big. Good, strong young player out here on the PGA Tour. One last year at Houston. And he's got one of those golf goatees. Let's go back to 16. Tom Kite, tremendously difficult putt. Down the slope. Barely put it in motion. Now it will gather pace. What a glorious touch that is. That is absolutely uncanny. That ball almost stopped and then gently rolled over the ridge. A beautiful touch for a man who's tried all kinds of putting grips, cack handed. The lot. Still a formidable competitor. About to finish in the top ten for the eleventh time. Now, the man they call Chema in Europe, Jose Maria Olathabal, with 215 yards to the flagstick, not a breath of wind. Kim Venturi, this green is uh, like a marble tabletop. You've been there all day, Ben, and I'd have to guess that this has to go over the back edge coming in there with a long iron. You just can't stop it, can you? Not really. He's going with a three iron. That's uh, right at it. If it's enough. Whew. Talk about living dangerously. That is absolutely on the very edge of the precipice. I'd run up there and hit it, Ben, right away. <laughs> Not a bad idea. You can see how the ground just starts to fall away if you miss the putting surface, and it is icy fast down there. Now, Tom Lehman from 195 yards. That was only about, what, a foot and a half of going back in the water, Ben. It was exactly that. I imagine he's probably got a five iron, Lehman, immensely strong. It's a four. That's right at it. Beautiful shot. Exquisite shot. The best of the day. Easily the best of the day. A magnificent stroke. And not too difficult a putt for the fourth Eagle Three of the tournament. That shows some intestinal fortitude. Young man from Austin, Minnesota, now a resident in Scottsdale. Now over to the 16th for his birdie, Larry Mize. Oh! Couldn't have hit it much better and seen it stay out. But those figures tell their own story. He was the worst of the three in the finishing holes, and he's already missed two opportunities at 15 and 16. And now a great ovation for Jose Maria Olathabal. Second here in 1991 when he took a sorry seven at the sixth hole on the second day.
first played here. Pinola Farble in 85 as a British amateur champion. And now, Tom Lehman, who has never won on the PGA Tour. Three victories on the Hogan Tour. But he's fifth in greens in regulation. And they love him. Over to 17. Thank you, Bentley. Larry Mize on the tee. Calls for a high draw, just what Larry's got in his bag. Smattering of applause, and then it quits. So, and they're going to restart that applause. I don't blame them. That's perfect. It's down the left hand side. And let's go see what's going on here. Ben at the 15th. Jose Maria Olathabo, Gary, will look at this from several angles. It's coming up the slope. There's not much break in it at all until it dies. There you see the uphill nature of this putt. If you're going to have a bolt at it, uh, it's much better to be in this position below the hole. I think he's thinking birdie. That's a wonderful putt. For Jose Maria Olathabal with Tom Lehman looking at an eagle opportunity of his own. What a magnificent effort. Very difficult for Tom Lehman to follow that in. And now Lehman has to make his putt. It's not a question of the luxury of lagging it down there for a birdie. He must make his eagle. And this is a, a rather tricky little slider to the right. And there is Ola Tharbel. After two lean years in terms of victories, just one again in his native Spain. Looks that uh, the foreigners are favorite again, but uh, I wouldn't count this big fellow out. If he makes this, of course, he's still only one behind. At the moment, it's 10 under for Ola Tharbel, 7 under for Lehman. This one will just die to the right in the last six inches. To the player's right, that is. To the left, as you look at it from this angle. Crushing blow. I thought he'd made it. So the advantage is two to Ola Tharbol with three holes to play. As they move over to the last of the water holes. And let's go to the 17th. Ben, I think your countrymen would say that's good theater, isn't it? Larry Mize now, 145 yards away and three shots back. This pin's in the back right. And you can see by that move right there, that's going to be just a little to the left, and it's going to go down that hill. And eventually, let's go back to you. 
Well, it is good theatre indeed. It always is here. Layman must be in some kind of shock. Just not enough pace to carry the ball to the hole on that eagle putt. And let's look at, again at this remarkable putt of Ola Tharbals. It was always going to be perfect for a birdie, but that was dead center. And he's putting like the Ola Tharbal of old. And now we've seen the make and now the miss. Just that inch short of pace. Oh. Very justifiable reaction. And there you see it on the little board at the 16th tee. Well, Olathabal first. Perfect for his shape of shot. Likes to bring it from right to left. Should be able to do that up the green and bring it round the bunker. If he doesn't block it, which is his bad shot. Well, he's been very conservative and has left himself when that ball finishes a pretty difficult part. There it goes down in almost into the bottom. But he'll still have a he'll still have a very difficult putt from there because it just dies to the left. Dives actually, not dies. Dives. Ben, if that had stayed up, that would have been literally almost impossible. It surely would. He got a good break, but everybody has had. You got the big break at 15 staying up, really. That's true. Now, there you see he's made two birdies out of three. That'll come down. That's going to come right down. That's going to leave him about a five footer. What a great golf shot. Well, he may never have won, but it's hard to believe it. To 17. Laurie Mize, much needed birdie. Hard to make it from down there. He is going to remain three shots back. And let's go back to 16. And the acclaim for first the Spaniard and then the hope of all America, Tom Lehman. And I can't speak enough volumes for that shot of Tom Lehman. What courage. He went right at it. No backing off in this young man. He's paid his dues, nine top tens in 92, six top tens last year. He's ready. What a glorious picture that is. The little ripples on the water provided by the insects and the fish. No wind. Now, 
ça, bon. Son of a greenskeeper, lived on a golf course all his childhood. Very much a family man. Likes to go home every few weeks to see his grandmother. This for a three-stroke lead, at least momentarily. See, he's aiming well to the right. She comes. Very good putt. That thing can get away from you. Now for his own psyche, Lehman really has to make this putt to get him back to only one behind. Once again, it uh, slides a little to the right. Kevin Turr, I'd say, uh, probably just outside the left edge. I think you're totally looking at speed, Ben. It's it's outside if it's going slow, but being two shots back, I wouldn't kind of be tentative. I'd have to take the the little firmer route and just bang it in. Oh. Well, he hit it firm, but uh, never had it far enough left. So advantage. Ola Thabel, if he can make this little one. It's not as short as it looks in that picture either. That slid in the tradesman's entrance. Let's have a look at Lehman's putt once again. No, he never had it far enough left to hold the line. It looked like the putter stopped some at, at momentum at the I ball. I think so. I think so. He almost decelerated, Kenny. You're right. Right, Ben. It did. It looked like he got to the ball and then kind of didn't Flinched. want to hit it too hard, backed off it. Right. Just flinched. And understand what it so. So we go up to the 17th with Ola Thabel leading by two from Tom Lane. 17th hole straight away, 400 yards. Trees down the left and the right. You can see the presidential tree there on the left. That's Ike's tree. No time to be presidential at this point. And that tree out in the background back there, that's the one most of the guys will hit. Now, Ollie has a tough time hooking the ball, especially high. A lot of problems last couple of years hitting the ball to the right. He's got a very weak grip. His body goes very fast through the ball, sometimes too fast, and he doesn't close his club face. Stand on the left, please. Trying to keep, Stand on the left, please. Trying to keep him standing still because their shadows are casting over towards the tee there and any movement at this point in time would scare the heck out of me. Two shots up, two holes to play.
there's a murmur. When there's a murmur, it must be left, left, and hit somebody. It's, we're looking, everybody's pointing. There we go. That's a pretty good bounce right there. That'd have been down towards the seventh hole. Very fortunate right there. You can see the problems he has trying to hit the high hook. It's going to be a ways back, but let's go to 18 first. And Tom Kite. Just 130 yards. And again, Pat, we have not seen a birdie here at 18. Uphill. Pin high. Back at 17. Okay, the kid from Minnesota. Uh, he's looking left, isn't he? Smattering of applause again. Okay, not bad. A pretty good angle into this flag stick, which is the extreme back right portion. And let's go forward to 18 and Larry Mize. Larry Mize has had his look. This is a 405 yard par four uphill, more uphill than it appears. He's also 130 yards. Right now, Mize is really trying to think birdie because with Tom Lehman at eight under going to 17, it could put him in a tie for second with the three here. That rhythm swing, beautiful. Hasn't changed. Left it out. Too easy. Maybe it has changed. Just kind of floated through it, Pat. He just kind of just hung on and came out high. So as we near the final, Ola Thabo, minus 10, Lehman two behind. Well, as they said, uh, Ola Thabo's father was a greenskeeper back at Royal San Sebastian in Spain. The family home uh, fronts the ninth green at the course, and only 20 yards from the front door was the practice putting green. Jose Maria said, I didn't have really any friends, no children around when I was a youngster, but I had that putting green right outside my front door. And since the age of five, I didn't need any friends, just that putting green. And my goal in life was just to hold every putt possible. Well, the one he holds today at 15 is one that uh, certainly will be remembered for a long time. You might recall last year, Bernhard Longer made the eagle putt at the 13th hole. But still, it's not over, and we'll be back in the cabin a little bit later on for the green jacket presentation. Let's go back out to the play at the 17th with Gary McCord. Well, the green jacket is in sight for Jose Maria Olazabal, but not over the green it won't be in sight. See if we can listen in, and I might have to interpret. Silence is the same in every language. He's looking for a pin over here on seven to see which way it's blowing. When you want it to go a certain way, just throw the grass. Just throw it that way, and you go, oh, right to left. There's not much wind at all. We've got him at 145 yards. Pin is in the back right shelf. DOA over this green. He'll probably end up being short left, putting it back up the hill. Seems to be the prudent play with a two shot lead. Oh, he's hitting a little run-up shot there. Whoa, 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 uh-oh. There's some body bags down there if it keeps going. Actually, stop, that's hard to believe. Most of those balls have been rolling all the way down. Once that thing scoots another foot, it'll go down 30 feet from that point right there. He tried to play a little knockdown into the hill. Let's go to 18 real quick. Kite and Mize finishing up. Kite just made par. And Mize has that left. Tom was in a very <laughs> different position. He is at fourth, and if he makes 
birdie, par, or bogey, he still finishes fourth. Back at 17. Now, Olafable can chip, but he's got a clever little chip shot he's going to have to pull off here. And I think Tom Lehman's eyes got very big, probably as big as Minnesota, when he saw that ball scoot over the green. 135 yards away, probably just a full wedge. He's got it going right. That's a fine golf shot right there. Pin high right on that top shelf. He'll have a nice birdie putt at it. Playing some great golf if he can get a putt to go down. Came on the tour in the early 80s, floundered. Started playing mini tours all over, all over the world. In fact, he's been in more spots than Bob Hope has, I think. Came back and he's won over a million dollars the last two years. Huge galleries here acknowledging Ola Faba. And now Tom Lehman coming up. And let's go forward to 18. Mize for par. I think that was born out of the large applause and noise at 17. While he was over the ball, he didn't back off. He kept going. And he'll finish at six under. And right now is third all by himself. Kite is fourth all by himself. Great showing, though, Pat. Tremendous. Back to 17. Here's what we got. We've got 30 feet. We're on a beautiful afternoon here at Augusta National. One of these two players is trying to win the Masters. Delicate little chip. There's a little knoll there. It's about the size of a speed bump. Jose Maria's got two options. He can flip it over that and try to keep it on the green, which would be difficult, but he's going to take the putter. Try to put it through about 10 feet of fringe, and then it's straight downhill to the flagstick. Point in the day when don't really want to take a wedge out and try to chip something. Got one of the great short games on this planet. See how he handles this one. Two shot lead. Oh, oh it's stuck. It absolutely stuck. I don't think he wanted to pitch the ball, risking something like that, and it happened with the wedge or with the putter, and there is a murmur here in this gallery. Lehman's eyes are getting bigger and bigger. Tom won last year at the end of the year in Japan. Just a solid player, solid player. When I look back, Tom Lehman's eagle putt. I can't believe that ball just drifted a little bit to the right, and then that little putt on 16, and here he is again, trying to tighten the noose just a little bit. This hasn't really got a frenzy of speed coming down this hill here. It's pretty flat. He knows which way it's going to break. He's just going to try to get it so he can swing this putter between the heartbeats. These greens are absolutely just like glass. I don't think they cut them out here. I think they use bikini wax on them. For a birdie and the moment to get within one. last three putts have just lacked just a little enthusiasm is all. They just had enough speed, another foot of speed. I think we'd had three birdies or an eagle and two birdies in a row. Oh, that was huge right there. He's now Olafable, even if he misses. 
can have a one-shot lead with one to go. Again, Venturi, I'd definitely like to have a two-shot lead going in, but at least he knows he won't lose the lead here. Well, Gary, you think back about the break that Olafalbo got at 15 staying up, another foot back, and he's in the water. And then, of course, I think I think that Lehman hit just beautiful putt at 15. He had a great putt there, but it was very tentative, the one at 16, though. But one shot doesn't mean you're going to win it. Well, this will be a tormenting little stroke here down the hill from eight feet for his par. If he can make that, it is down to a one shot lead. And the jacket is still in jeopardy. Will it be the Spaniard or will it be Tom Lehman from Minnesota? Has yet to win on the PGA Tour. Trying to win the Masters. You might want to stick around and watch the last hole, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to give you a good look here at this last putt. As the crowd now starts to really get into it, you can look at it right here. So the putter blade came straight back. You know he's backing off, and I caught the roll right there, going to the right. And now Tom Lehman. Oh, look, we can catch it. Look at this. Is this any good? Ride that thing. Get you hit a little harder, Tom. You can see the putter go back in disgust. And let's go to the 18th tee, guys. Bring it on in for us. And there have been no birdies all day long on 18. 49 players have not made a birdie, so you would think that Olathabo can make par. He should win because no one can make birdie in the hole. But now it's all important now that Lehman puts the heat on Olathabo. But look at this. He has taken an iron off the tee. And the tee box is all the way back. Hole is playing short. It's downwind, but I I can't figure out the iron. I, I mean, uh, one back, one ahead. I I can go for that, but one back, I got to show you both guns. Yeah, you got to think about what he did yesterday. Yeah, beautiful drive, then laid off on his second How's shot. He's got to go left. That's that, that's a left swing. I don't like that. I didn't like the choice, Pat. With his length, I'd have to just take it up and just blow it as hard as I can. I'll be interested uh, to hear why he made that choice. One ahead, yes. One behind, I don't see that. So now he's got a player in. Olatabel has an iron. That was dictated by Tom Lehman's iron going in the bunker. He doesn't feel he can birdie. Olathabo thinks he can make par with the iron. The reaction is good. So is the shot. Olathabo. Approaches the 18th green in the final round of the Masters, leading Lehman by one. Well, they've come to the 72nd hole, and let's uh, talk about top 24 because the top 24 and ties all make it back for next year's Masters. And here are the names. Great tournament for Lauren Roberts. Plus four, as it turns out, got you in the top 24. We thought it might be five, but a couple of players with a late charge got inside of that and finished at plus four. But the big question is, will Olafabo hold on? There's a 
green jacket, size 41 regular, that will be his if he can win it right there at the 18th green. Back to Pat Summerall and Ken Venturi. Wonderful galleries again this year. So knowledgeable and so courteous. And I'm sure many of them are wondering about Tom Lehman's choice of an iron on the 18th tee. Speaking of the galleries, Pat, they're undoubtedly the best galleries in all of golf, right? Without here. question. Now, the one thing about this, Sandy Lyle made birdie here to win the Masters one year, but he was in that up front in the bunker and hit it up on the top. The pin was in the same place. It came up the hill and then rolled back, and then he made the putt coming down the hill for about six feet. But again, I'd be interested to hear why he took the iron being first up. <laughs> it's it could be sitting up a little better. It's just down just a little bit. He's going to have to pick it almost a hair thin. He has 150 yards, and I think Olathaba will be first to play, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks as if you're right. I know that Olathaba is right. Right side of this uphill. You don't realize until you walk how much uphill it is. I would be very surprised, Pat, if, I, if this ball is left of the flag. I can I only shot. see this. He okay, has got to take it at the middle of the green. If it draws, fine, but put it at the middle of the okay. green. 148 to the front. Okay. 48 to the front. And you heard him, I think, say to Lehman, I'll come up. And then Lehman decided that he will go. And he is out. Must, must put it on the green. Not sure. At this point, if I was the caddy, no matter what he said, I would agree. <laughs> would not detract from his confidence. Whatever he thinks he has to do, say yes, you're right, and give him confidence. He has given this caddy all the credit in the world this week. Pick it off, get it high. It's got to go. Way, way, way short. And going back down the hill. That had to go another 45 yards. When he said go, he I did. I thought he was talking just get over the bunker. He had to go 45 more yards to get up to the green. To get to the hole. Now again, I will now tell you, if this goes left, it is pulled and a miserable mistake. Seven iron. Abbreviated swing, knocking it down, taking it from right to left. I said, not there. It is not over yet. Mental error again. The punch that went down in the gallery and was stopped there. Ola Thabo has some work left to be done. Crowd, the gallery welcoming the last two, Ola Thabal and Lehman, to the 18th area. Neither one of them on the green. They are moving a lot of gallery, and as they move the gallery, the ball kept moving down the hill a little bit. But this is where they have been sitting. There have been chair marks, there are pot marks there. This one here is, this is not a pitch shot. This is a bump and run. And this one here, if it doesn't get up the hill, will run right back into the gallery again. He's faced with one of the most difficult little shots you can find and consider the situation. Well, the situation itself is difficult enough. But uh, the question will forever be asked. Why the iron for Lehman off the 18th tee? 
and with a seven iron into the green, why go left? For Ulathabo. Yes. Tom yeah. Lehman is going to be away, I think, Pat. I think he'll be first to play. And this one here, he has to. This is no bump and run here. He's going to have to put a sand wedge on there. Maybe use that 60 degree wedge that he has. Give it aloft and land it just about, oh, 10 feet on the green. The hole is 36 back from the front. So it is not going to, it's not one you can put a lot of bite on it. But he's going to have to try to check it as, as best he can. And he's not going to rush it, I'll tell you that. Absolutely not. All those clubs have become very heavy. And it shows on his face. I would be very interested, though, as we were discussing in the break, that his theory of taking the iron when he was one back and up first. Because just before that, we saw Larry Mize and Tom Kite drive. They were only 130 yards, and they were just, and most of the players were driving it right around the bend. They just blew it past those bunkers. And the shorter the, the iron here, the better off you are. Here's Lehman's third. If he gets this anywhere close, it will really put some heat on Olathabo. <clears throat> He's got to get it within six feet, I believe. One thing for sure, it'll be quiet. Get in the jaw. Let's double the six. Let's go to 12, maybe 15 feet. Mm. That could have checked and not even made the green. I don't know at this point if you talk about experience, you talk about having been there before in this situation before on this golf course. I don't know what dictates what you think. I think you're discussing a major championship. You're discussing the Masters and. Again, we've seen so many things happen on the back nine on Sunday. Olathopel is just just beneath us. Now he's in a what they would call their probably the longest grass they have. But we'll know when he gets over the ball what kind of shot he's gonna play here. He's gonna bump it. Going to hit it on the top of that hill and let it feed down to the right, which is a very smart play rather than trying to go right more. He's 25 feet aiming 30 feet left of the flag. That's going to go further than you think. Watch this. Watch the touch, but watch. It's still not over. Nope. That took some real talent and nerve because that ball did, was not going very fast when it finally got on the green. That was just a, a just a foot short of not getting on the green at all. These two will think about 18 at Augusta National as the longest hole ever played, not in terms of yardage, but in terms of time. How things change, Olafowl to started to. Turn it with a 74 and then shot 67 69. But I still think the biggest break he had came at, at the uh, 15th hole. And I still, I'll tell you another break he got was at 16 when that ball came down the hiller because you saw how difficult the speed was when you saw Tom Kite's putt. Green Jacket presentation to the champion of 1994 will be made. When the winner is determined down in the cabin, down in our studio. You will see probably the longest time that you'll ever see for two putts to be hit. They'll look at it every side. And if Lehman can make this, you'll really see a long time with Olathabo. If he doesn't make it, Olathabo knows that two putts he wins. This is the tournament right here. This is the biggest shot there is. Now, I 
I don't know if a I cushion. would rush that because he is now dropped to seven and misses that. He drops into a tie with Larry Mize. So all all Othabel has to do is just two putt and go quietly. He will finish, it appears. He'd be almost directly in Olathabal's line if he didn't. Well, the putt's important, Pat. Why mm -hmm. he's going first is that if Olathabal makes or doesn't make, everybody begin moving, the tournament's over, and he has to put his ball down and putt. He's made the right move. He has to putt out uh, because it's not a gimme. There are none. Not on these greens. Sad bogey. Sad. This is what you dream about. Six footer, two putts to win the Masters. Doesn't get any better than that. around the hole you'll be able to read the name of the ball that's how slow it'll be going yeah. nice way to go out you'll read all of that on the trophy 1994 Masters champion. If that could help Tom Lehman, he knows now that he four would not have won it. Got in the playoff. It has to soothe a few wounds. I wonder. But he won't forget it. Jose Maria Olatabo. It went around one thing, Pat. It went around the break at 15 and then making the putt. Here again, the winning putt. Nice and easy. And look at Lehman. Ola Thabo wins at nine under. Well, they've been forecasting for years that Jose Maria Ola Thabo would one day win a major, and he has today as we look at the finishing scores. John Daly, third here last year, did not make a run at it. In 94, Ernie Els, an outstanding first Masters. Faldo did not have a single round under par. Raymond just keeps coming back and contending, finishing at one under. Jay Haas today with a 69, and John Harris, the only amateur to make the cut. John Houston today, 69, finishing red figures. Tom Kite, fourth place showing. Bernhard Longer, plus five. Sandy Lyle hit the 15th green yesterday in two with a driver and a wedge. His tee shot went 377 yards. Never heard of that before. Greg Norman, eight over on the weekend. Corey Pavin with a 70 in the final round. And Lauren Roberts with an excellent Masters. B.J. Singh won the par three contest Wednesday. Jeff Sluman one shot out of the top 24 here. Curtis two back. Lanny Watkins hold his second shot yesterday at 14. Tom Watson by the way 20th straight year he made the cut that's a master's record. 
Beautiful weather, beautiful setting as always, and it came down to the last green. But on Thursday, what a tiger the 15th was. This was Payne Stewart. Payne would suffer a nine. It was even a 10 that day. Watch Larry Mize now going for the green and two. Thought he had it cleared. But like a magnet right back into the water. Even Tom Watson from behind the green chipped it across the surface and suffered a triple bogey. Greg Norman found the water, but he came back Played his fourth shot to here, and for par, a great save by Norman there in the first round. Meanwhile, ahead at 17 on Thursday, Larry Mize. His 68 was the first round lead. Two back, two-time winner, Tom Watson. On Friday, people were wondering, was there a shark lurking in those waters? Well, first, it was Dan Forsman rolling it up the slope like Nicholas did back in 75. He had the low round of the tournament. In fact, on Friday, it held up a 66. Mize the second day at 15. And he mastered his first day nemesis this time. Meanwhile, Norman over at 11. That set up a birdie. And it's 17. Another one. Mize led by one. But Norman was stalking. But in the third day, he ran out of birdies. Not a single birdie for Greg. Here at 16, coming up short. Lanny Watkins at 14, Saturday. Right. <laughs> the sweet sound of a old shot from the fairway. Meanwhile, Tom Lehman, he was third last year in his first Masters. Going for the green at two, in two. And look at the shape of this shot. Beautiful. They belong to Lehman and Olaf Fabel. And here's Chima on the 10th with his iron shot stiff. Ken Venturi's always called it moving day, and Olaf Fabel shot 69 Saturday. And Lehman matched him with what he called the putt of his career. That last putt was the luckiest putt I've ever made in my entire life. And here we are today. Another brilliant day at the National. Tom Lehman. Opened with a one-shot lead over Olaf Fabel. Larry Mize. That was at 12. It's a three-way tie for a large part of this round with Mize included, but at 12, he bogeyed. Then Chima at 15 with the eagle. That's a putt that will be played back for years. Meanwhile, for Eagle, also at 15, Lehman, agonizingly close. And at the 18th, greatest feeling in golf. Knowing you've won the Masters, Jose Maria Olafabel. And we welcome you to the Butler Cabin, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, along with Joe Ford, who is the vice chairman of the Augusta National Golf Club. And Joe, we're joined right now by John Harris, who is the low amateur here at the Masters, the only amateur to make the cut. Jose Maria Olafabo, I know a little emotional right now, uh, savoring the moment for sure. And Bernhard Longer, two-time winner, 1993 champion. Just uh, another tournament filled with suspense. It was a fantastic tournament and a great finish and a great winner. And uh, Jim, first of all, we would like to express our appreciation to Pat Summerall 
and to say, Pat, thank you for all you have done for the Masters. And John, congratulations for being the low amateur. The Masters has a tradition of including amateurs. And you are a low amateur, and we extend our congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Jose Marie, what a great champion. Great tournament for you. What does winning the Masters mean to you? Well, it's like a dream come true. Uh, I, I didn't expect to, to win it so early. I mean, I was trying hard. Uh, I tried to uh, win it every time I came here. But uh, this week, I really played relaxed, and it really meant uh, a lot to me. Great performance. And Jim, I'm sure you have some questions. The experience of 91, when you were right there, how much did that help you today in the battle? Well, it did help me quite a bit, especially on 18. Uh, when I played here on 91 and finished second, I, I used the driver of the tee on 18. And uh, I was one shot ahead uh, this time, and I used the one iron of the tee. Uh, and I think that was uh, very important at that point. Well, it's time for that cherished moment, time for the green jacket, Mr. Ford. It is our custom that the defending champion make the presentation. Bernhard, you have been a great champion. We thank you for that very much. And would you make the presentation of the green jacket? My pleasure. Thank you. Jose? It's great. Congratulations. Thank great you. champion. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Jose Maria, your grandmother's back home. She lights a candle while Chim is away until he comes back. This time he'll come back as the Masters champion. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much.